Hi guys, welcome to today's session. I really appreciate you all joining on time. We have already 25 people. Super. And let us wait for another couple of minutes and then we can kick off. Yeah, I think we're at 11 or 1 Belinda. We can start and in the meantime, the introduction is done. We can just take it forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm with Fred. Yeah. Great guys. So I officially welcome you all to your Abrad Rise live session. And as you know that today's session is on uh, ways to avoid burnout by your one of the favorite experts, Belinda Aluwalia, who is CEO at the Positivity Company. I assume that um, some of you have already attended the previous sessions by Berinder as well on strategic thinking as well. Good morning, everybody. Good morning and good afternoon if you're in the Far East. Uh... Yeah, so moving ahead, uh, just wanted to brush up on the monthly calendars which we have just launched. Please have a look in case you have not registered for any of the sessions. Please, you have still time to register for as many courses as you want. And just to repeat myself, all these courses under Upgrad Rise are absolutely free of course for all the alumni. So please do not hesitate and attend as many courses as you want. Going ahead, we have so much for you planned this month. And quickly taking you all to the initiatives we are uh, operating and running at Upgrad, Upgrad Rise. Most of you would be familiar with it. Uh, opportunities, to, opportunities to continue upskilling yourself. Upgrad Sharp 2.0 career enhancement through personalized coaching in case you need any help with your resume building, jobs at the last minute, interview preps, please do drop us a line on alumni at the rateupgrad.com and the team will take care of it. Upgrad after hours, I have a peer-to-peer -peer networking session and we have a small surprise for you in this session as well, which we will be coming on to after a few minutes. Community opportunities at Upgrad, hire from Upgrad and alumni mentor if you wish to contribute yourself or uh, something to uh, Upgrad and you think that uh, by your contribution, Upgrad can also make good use of it. People can be hired in this tough time of pandemic and you wish to you know, uh, extend your services as a mentor to Upgrad, please do drop us a line on alumni.upgrad.com with all the details and we can take it forward. And alumni roundtable, our newest initiative, the DM folks who are in this call must know and have attended the round table on digital marketing, which happened on 9th of June. And it was a great success with the help of all of you. And uh, for more communications on this side, please stay tuned from our end. And yeah, upgrade after hours, the surprise for which I was talking. And over to you, Sakshi. Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, really glad to see so many people join in on a Sunday morning. Uh, just to start with, I'd like to talk about the surprise that Nikhil mentioned earlier. We're going to have a mini after hours uh, right after uh, Birendra's session. What's going to happen is it's a 20 minute session where we're going to um, just divide everybody into breakout rooms. Um, you guys will get an opportunity to talk to each other, catch up with your peers and um, discuss any needs you might have from the community. This can be as simple as wanting to learn a new skill or teach a new skill to the community. Uh, moreover, it's a smaller version of a bigger after hours that's happening on the 20th. I will be putting the link towards the end of the session into the chat box. So you guys can register for that as well. Uh, without getting into, uh, you know, uh, anything more, I'll just hand it over to Birendra. And I'd love for you guys to stick right till the end. Thank you so much. Great. Uh, so we are officially uh, set to start the session. Over to you, Birendra.
Thank you so much for that, Sakshi. Thank you, uh, Nikhil. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, very quickly on chat, if you could just tell me so that I'll know how much of you, how many of you are. If you've attended any of my previous two sessions, uh, which we had done on resilience, just say yes. Uh, otherwise, just say no. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, Priya, weekend fun. Tino, you remember that. So that's going to be my step two. You get full points for that already. Okay, quite quite a few, quite a few yeses, quite a few noes. Okay, so for some people who have already attended, we'll try and do a little bit of a recap also. So this will be a refreshing, uh, a refresher, so to say, for all of you. So, uh, so good morning, everybody, and you know, just like Tino, uh, if you can just give each other a nice long good morning on chat, that'll be great. Come on, guys, on chat, if you can give a nice long good morning. Come on, guys, just like Tino did. Thank you for leading the way, Tino. Good morning, Pooja. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, hey Jaydeep. Good morning. Chandrasekhar. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Rakshi. Good morning. Abhiram. Good morning. Good. You know, looking at these good mornings, you know, uh, my energy tends to get elevated. That's why I get everybody to do that. Okay, let's get my slides going now. Good morning, excellent. So let's dive in. You know, and everybody were talking about, and you open the newspapers nowadays, the first thing that hits you is stress and it hits a burnout. But interestingly, this word called stress and burnout, did you know, didn't exist till the year 1956 when Hans Selway actually introduced it to, into our vocabulary. And he, he found out something very interesting. He, you know, what he said is, uh, because a lot of us used to have this thing about stress. Whereas what he said is that stress per se does not kill us, but it is our reaction to stress. Okay? Uh, and that was the interesting discovery because what we found is that when is stress most harmful? Okay, uh, And he said, we found three things. One is stress is most harmful when it feels against your own will or out of your control. You know? Think about a time, uh, how many of you have learned to ride a bicycle or learned swimming? How many of you learned bicycle, learned swimming? How was that? Did it feel stressful when you were learning to ride a bicycle, learning swimming or learning a new, new skill? And it was tough, right? Learning how to ride a bicycle. Most of us, I think I fell a few times before ride, uh, riding a bicycle and and did you swallow some water way above? Did you swallow some pool water? So what happened is that it was something we chose on our own. It was not thrust upon us, right? Therefore, it did not feel like stress. It did not feel like a burnout because it was, a, it was with our will. So you see how stress gets introduced in our lives. That's the first thing. Then the second is when you feel inadequate, okay? What does this mean? What this means is, you know, supposing many of us would have tried swimming or tried bicycling, okay? How many of us gave up swimming uh, by just learning the basic strokes, okay? Or how many of us, we did go into the, the we did take up cycling, for example, but just as leisure, never got into it professionally, right? Because you would have said, hey, hey, wait a minute, this is too much, it's getting out of my hand, okay? So therefore, you kind of felt inadequate and gave this up. Okay. But what you're finding interestingly is that when you're surrounded today with all the pandemic and the related issues, that it is not the stress, but because we feel inadequate. Okay. And the third and very important thing is that it isolates us from others and it makes us feel alone in our struggles. And that's why you'll see why at the end when we do the office hours, the networking hour, that's very critical because not only it helps you build your professional network, but it will also get into you into a community, right? And you'll see how something as small as that will actually help you not feel alone and struggle. So that's what he found out okay, about stress, okay? And uh, I'm going to cover a few of these aspects about how do we avoid burnout, okay? 
and like and you know uh, randy power said this so well uh, and in his last lecture by the way if you should read his book or it, there's a ted talk too about him uh, randy uh, randy power's the last lecture okay so therefore the point we are trying to make is first of all when we experiencing burnout okay we're going to do a quick assessment about how many of us are actually experiencing the symptoms of burnout but many of us we have always thought stress is negative and should be avoided okay uh, how many of us agree with this on a scale of 1 to 10 how many of you agree with this stress is negative and should be avoided So quite a few of us not very really agreeing with this. Okay, some of some of us are at ten, some of us at sevens. Okay, what we find something very interesting is, and Kelly McGonigal and has done some fabulous work in this space. Okay, what she says is that what we find is that stress actually vit uh, vitalizes us. It gives us energy to be to look at a event as a learning and a growth, and therefore stress can be a moment. of learning and can be utilized okay second many of us feel stress is depleting okay how many of us once we've gone through a tough presentation or maybe a tough sales target or maybe a tough coding assignment maybe a tough you know really how many of us just feel depleted after that exercise just say me just say me uh, totally agree totally disagree Uh, if anybody is raising uh, your hand, yeah, okay, you're just raising your hand. If you have any questions, by the way, keep firing on chat. Okay, so I'm watching chat. I'll be happy to answer those questions. You know, and all the sports fans out there, okay, uh, you know, if there's a test match going on, five day test match, and one team is just winning everything, scoring all the runs, taking all the wickets, and there is an easy victory at the end. What are the chances you'll watch the test match if it's a very easy win? What are the chances you'll watch the test match? Very less, right? Okay. And if there is a fight back happening, what are the chances you'll watch it? If there's a if there's a fight back taking place and the match is getting tense, yeah, because. that's what stress does to us right <laughs> unless india is losing or india gets there okay and then suddenly rishabh pant will come and start scoring those runs right <laughs> okay uh, yeah and therefore what we find is stress can actually vitalize you because it's when you when you experience stress the body releases these hormones to be able to give you that energy right and a lot of us feel stress impairs my performance okay uh, again i'll go to the sports metaphor is it a coincidence that most athletes score their world records only in the final round of the olympics is it a surprise why does that happen you know if stress was impairing you you would have been breaking those records in practice right but why is it that athletes don't can't seem to break their records in practice but they can break it at the most stressful moment why do you think that happens because what happens there is you know this is the last moment this is it okay and therefore uh, like rajvi we point out this is a do or die kind of a thing right and then you have 100000 uh, 100000 people cheering you on egging you on right and there's a there's a feeling of competition that this is the final moment and that's when athletes go into what they call in the zone okay have you noticed yourself going in the zone sometimes when do you notice yourself going in the zone when you are really enjoying the challenge have you noticed in the last 2 or 3 months 6 months when you really went into the zone where something stressful happened and you managed to really improve your performance could you think of some examples creating something in the software world gansham yeah when some close that timelines there yeah, okay but bills to pay motivated okay when you were challenged yeah absolutely okay 
And therefore, what we find is that when you start facing a stressful situation, it actually enhances your performance. Okay. Uh, and that's why, for example, if you have a presentation, you'll go through it many times. You'll check the slides. You might do dry runs. Okay. If you're doing a data science thing, you'll recheck and uh, check and recheck the formula before you hit send. Uh, because, you know, because something that matters, you will obviously make those double changes. And therefore, stress enhances your learning. Okay. Can you think, can you look back in the last 15 months, what are the three or five skills that you have adopted? Uh, Sailesh, absolutely. We'll, we'll come to that. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. We'll come to that. Can you think of three or five skills that you've learned? For example, for me, I could never make videos okay, in the last 15 months. But then I discovered Canva and I started making some real fun videos for, me, for myself, for my clients. Okay? Uh, I discovered LinkedIn. I never, you know, most of my clients earlier used to come from word of mouth. Then I discovered LinkedIn. And in fact, Nikita, it's her birthday today, and Nikita, who works for Upgrad, she found me uh, through LinkedIn, you know. So therefore, learning, I learned new skills and some benefits came from that also. Okay. Uh, so everybody, if you could just share very quickly, what are the skills you've learned in the last 15 months? Kuntal, yeah, prioritization, Priya, time management, Vaiba, interpersonal skills. I'm glad time management is coming up. Digital marketing, Zoom, you've learned. Yeah, everybody's learned Zoom, right? Hey, you learned vlogging. I, I must learn from you vlogging, okay? There's one thing I want to do I've never got into. So, uh, Sakshi, you took admission and upgrade. That's a good thing you have done. People management, time management, uh, changing mindset, Deepak, fabulous. So you see, when we were stressed, okay, you discovered a sense in poetry. That's good. Okay, that's good. So unless you discovered multitasking, that's not a very good thing. We'll see that today. <laughs> okay, uh, but maybe it's working for you. Why not? Okay, yeah. And you know, the way this happens is, uh, and I had shown this earlier, but I'll just cover it once again. Uh, Namrata, you, you learned cooking. What did you learn to cook? Entertainment. We learned new form. Yeah, I discovered Netflix. Your partner, you also learned blogging. By the way, the bloggers and vloggers, uh, you should share your blogs with us. Uh, we'd be happy to learn from you guys, see what you're writing and what you're talking about. Hey, nice. Okay. So what happens is uh, when we start getting into a stressed situation, okay, or before that, what really happens is that our skills are low and the challenge that we face are low. But then suddenly we face a very new challenge. What happens there is we reach a zone of panic, right? And from the panic, we increase our skills, right? And when we increase our skills, that's when we go into a zone of flow, okay? The flow is when our, our skills match the challenge, okay? Now, over a period of time, that same activity becomes a comfort zone. Think back about cycling, right? After some time, the same cycle, which gave us a great amount of joy, if it was fun, if we were enthusiastic about it, the same cycling became a headache, right? I mean, kind of, okay, fine, it's there, okay? We got into the comfort zone, okay? And then sometimes, if the challenge is, is slightly above us, we, we are in a zone of eustress, okay? And the opposite of panic is actually boredom. You know, so if you're experiencing boredom, what it means is you really need to increase the challenge for yourself. Okay. Now, question for all of you. Uh, if you already know the answer from my previous workshops, uh, don't answer that. Okay. Where does maximum learning take place? Out of these five zones, which zone does learning take place? Use stress. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And why is that? Anybody remembers? Why is that? Why does learning take place here? Any guesses?
Yeah, Abhiram. So what happens is that uh, if you don't do that, first of all, you start sliding into the comfort zone. Okay. But if you gradually keep increasing your targets, okay, or the goals that you have, okay, uh, that's the time you start experiencing eustress where your brain is constantly growing and adapting to the new skills it's learning, right? So therefore, for example, uh, and I'll give you a personal example here. Uh, when I started my yoga, I used to find it very stressful to do a 30 second plank, okay? Uh, and then I would kind of give up at 30 seconds. I moved to 31, I moved to 35, and then I moved to 40 seconds, okay? Uh, and then I kept increasing the number of seconds I could do a plank, okay? Today, uh, I can do a five minutes plank, okay? Continuous five minutes plank. Uh, so therefore, you know, because I kept increasing the challenge, my brain had kept adapting to it, okay? And that's where, yeah, I know it's quite nice, right, Vivangi, okay? So I do a five minutes plank, okay? A little bit of variation here and there if I get bored in that. Uh, and five minutes nonstop, yeah? Five minutes nonstop. So it's not uh, break, et cetera, yeah? Uh, and, and it all happened because I kept increasing it by two seconds, three seconds, five seconds, okay? From 30 seconds. I, and when I first tried it, I said, even if I just do 10 seconds, it'll be fine. I managed to do 30, okay? And from 30, I went to 31, to 32, to 35. And good. Uh, and, you know, that, and that's how I do all of my yoga because I do a stretch for a longer amount of time rather than doing more amount of position, poses, etc. So, for example, my Pavan Muktasan, I do for three minutes rather than just doing for half a minute. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If I work on priority, okay, put the hiring post for digital marketing on the LinkedIn. Absolutely. Yeah? So, that's the first thing, which is the challenge part of it. Okay. But, like you rightly pointed out, and I think Sailesh pointed out, Stress becomes a challenge in a very interesting way, and we're going to cover that. But first, how does stress show up? How do we know we are not okay? So what I want you to do is pull out your mobile phones, okay? Go to slido.com, okay? Go to slido.com, and the code, I'm going to just put it up on the screen also, so you find it on your screens. Let me just fire it up for you. Just give me a second. Okay. I'm going to go to full screen. Okay. Go to slido.com. Okay. And the code is happy1306, which is today's date. Okay. Or you could just scan the QR code, which is on your left column there. Okay. And the first question is, last week, I was at peak performance. Okay. So everybody pull out your mobile phones, scan this code, uh, or just go to slido.com. It will ask you for a code and just say happy 1306. Come on, guys, a lot of IT-friendly people here. We should go and be doing much faster than that. <laughs> I'm putting stress on you, as you can see.
my apology I, I just lost video let me get back okay let me get back to my screen okay there we go okay so 5.8 is our overall score you can see uh, nearly 22 to 36 40 for nearly half of us are above average at peak okay and 8 14 uh, 20, around 30 percent one third of us are at peak performance so you can see many of us obviously we come from different backgrounds etc we all are at different levels of performance uh, let me just pull up Another question, okay? And my next question is this. I'm happy with my life the way it is, okay? Give yourself a 10, okay, that uh, absolutely I don't want to change anything in my life. Give yourself a one where I would like to change everything in my life. <laughs> okay, my life really sucks. I want to change everything about it. Give yourself a one. Uh, if you're absolutely thrilled with your life, you don't want to change anything about it, give yourself a 10. And now you can see very clearly there is a correlation between stress okay and the way we want to change things in our lives okay uh 5.4 uh we are nearly the average there just about at the average half of us feel uh i could make a lot of changes in my life uh, half of us feel well uh i'm quite happy actually the way my life is currently going okay and that really is a one if you have to ask somebody a one second uh, or a one question uh, assessment on happiness, okay, that's pretty much it. And now I want to ask you one more question, okay, which is in the last one week, how much stress did you experience? Give yourself a 10 if you experienced a lot of stress. Give yourself a one, not, not at all. <laughs> Give yourself a 10 if you experience a lot of stress. One, nope, not at all. I was quite happy. So now you see, you can be you can begin to see where all of this is coming from, right? It is the stress that we are experiencing, okay? And our average scores is seven point four, and therefore you can see uh, many of us are in that uh, you know we are caught in this stressful situation. And now I'm going to ask you one more question, and just hear this out before you answer this, okay? Uh, people are still answering, okay? We we'll wait till sixty five, maybe. Come on, guys, a bit more participation would be great. Uh, hopefully, we should cross the 70 barrier at least for the next seven questions. Okay. I've got four more questions to go. Okay. Uh, and, the mo and the more the people who respond, uh, I can also keep changing my presentation as we go. Uh, I can keep uh, customizing it if you want. Okay. I think we're at 64. And now, what I want you to tell us is okay, just tell us keywords. Okay. Tell us keywords. But what specifically stressed you out? And you shouldn't say the virus or the pandemic, okay? What specifically st stressed you out in the last one week, okay? Bills?
the work stress tada and what part about the work okay work pressure productivity finances uh, boss uh financial liabilities okay peer competition timelines is now coming up uh, what about the future right Ah, I love that. Some people are saying overthinking. We uh, can see career, the vaccines, uh, things which are not done, work overload, uh, stagnating. Uh, maybe my job location far away from home and my loved ones. Okay, uh, situation at work. Okay, uh, maybe flights getting cancelled. You can't travel. BSC index up. That should be good news, right? Or you didn't invest, therefore you're getting stressed. So you can see so many things which are worrying us, okay, uh, and different kind of things. So whether it's finances, whether it's health, uh, future is still there. Right? Yeah, and so here's the interesting part. So now we are seeing, okay, you know, quite a few of us are experiencing very similar needs and similar problems. Okay, now how does stress show up? Okay. Stress first shows up in the physical body, right? Uh, how many of you experienced some of these? You can see straight away the what happens is stress first shows up in low energy and interestingly low energy usually shows up because of interrupted sleep or sleeping for less than seven hours so that's one of the first signs and uh, very interestingly for this group uh, the bodily symptoms therefore becomes a headache and it becomes digestive systems tend to become for many of us. Uh, and therefore, chronic fatigue because we are not being able to recover from the stress, right? So you can see that very clearly. This is what's happening. It's showing up in the body, okay? But interestingly, stress gets first processed in the mind, right? And therefore, how how many of you experienced some of these? So again, you can see negative thoughts and emotions start coming to our heads. Uh, we can't seem to focus. Okay. Uh, and interestingly, stress also hits our ability to make the right commitments. And then once we make the commitment, an inability to keep those commitments also. Uh, a lot of it also, stress also tends to hit us because we tend to get more confused, a bit more helpless about uh, what we can do but you can see predominantly negative thoughts and lack of focus coming into play very strongly for this group. Okay. And then, okay, 
if you look at spiritual okay which is the final and especially if stress goes on for a longer time it starts to hit you at the soul level at the spiritual level did you experience any of these Fabulous. Okay. So you can see here, uh, many of us, we are experiencing a lack of purpose. What does this mean exactly? Lack of purpose and meaning is about, you know, you're one, trying to figure out about what is this world about? Okay. What is my role? What is, am I having an impact? Okay. Am I making a difference in the life of others? Right? And therefore, many of us are also experiencing a loss of identity because it kind of seems that our role in the world has changed, right? Or how we are seeing the world, how the world sees us, our importance to the world, that's also kind of changing. So you can see this very clearly coming out, right? And therefore hopelessness, a loss of identity. And now the last question, okay? When all of this happened, what did you do to look after yourself? So you can see everybody tends to figure it out themselves, okay? And that's one of the big challenges because we don't, we somehow don't tend to ask for friend, uh, help from friends or from colleagues, okay? And that's why today at 12.30, you'll have the opportunity to, to set this right. So Sakshi is going to uh, break you out all into rooms and now you'll be able to actually ask for help from friends. And we're going to see some of the signs behind this before that about why this is very useful in helping us burn, uh, helping us recover. So now, if you were to look at all of these together, okay, what comes to your mind, everybody? If you can share on chat, okay, you can see our happiness single question, uh, which is an average of 5.2. You can see we've experienced a lot of stress at 7.4, okay. Uh, you can see our peak performance, we're pretty good at there, 5.96, which is pretty good, okay. You saw different things are stressing. Guys, there is a problem. Uh, this internet has some problem. Yeah. Just give us a minute and we will be automatically turning back. Yeah, Belinda, actually, there was a glitch in your internet, so we couldn't hear you for the last two minutes. Yeah, okay, let, let me just go back. Uh, I don't know why my wife is very patchy today. Usually, it doesn't. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me just get this up so that we can. Why is this one there? Okay, so now for all of us, let me just get back on. Yeah. Suddenly I saw my slides were not changing on my monitor and I realized. Okay, so now for all of us, if you were to look all of this in one shot, okay, 
you can see many of us, we are happy with the uh, with your life the way it is currently. You can see we are, a lot of us are experiencing a lot of stress. You can see that. You can see very clearly uh, that this is also resulting at a slightly lesser lower performance, which is six, which is not bad at all, by the way. Six is pretty good. Okay. And then different things have stressed us out at different points of time. You can see that. You can then see body getting impacted, giving us low energy and uninterrupted sleep. Okay. You can see the mind getting impacted with negative emotions and uh, negative thoughts and emotions. You can see the soul getting impacted with our purpose and meaning. And you can see very clearly, we're we are trying to power through or figure it out ourselves. Okay. Uh, any aha moments, any reflections for you as you see this? A lot of us are in pain, right? We're not alone. Yeah. People not reaching out. Yeah, we are in the same boat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes very difficult to handle. Uh, Yeah, Namrata, uh, stress sometimes can get us uh, the feeling of being useful, correct? Okay. Uh, Deepak, yes, because all of this, sometimes it gets very difficult to handle. Yeah, Ajo, that's fabulous. Oh, most of us are resilient. resilient yeah? Most of us. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, uh, Naveen, you've seen the impact of stress. You've seen how it impacts the body. And now we're going to turn this around very quickly. Yeah. Because, yeah, Uttara, you know, what's happening is because we're seeing this suffering everywhere. And therefore, it kind of tends to become a bit difficult. So therefore, that's the biggest question, okay? And which says there that when you're not at our best selves, that's the time to really ask for help, okay? Uh, and the, therefore, the key is how can we use this stress and learn from this burnout and therefore develop what we call a growth mindset, okay? Nidhi, I came out of the biggest crisis of my life with the help of friends, families, and a listener group. Yeah, absolutely, Nidhi. Okay, and many of us did that, absolutely. And the model of well-being, uh, and I presented a couple of times back also, but it can be a refresher, like I said, is called PERMA. And PERMA is known to be a good cure for burnout. PERMA stands for positive emotions, engagement at work, positive relationships, meaning, and accomplishment. Okay, uh, We're going to cover some of these today. Uh, and like I explained, and Prandi Pao said this so well in his last lecture, like I was saying earlier, Put your own oxygen mask before assisting others. You know? And this is the most wisdom-laden dialogue that the aircraft crew gives you when you're taking off, right? Uh, because many of us make the mistake of trying to help others before we help ourselves. And that's one of the biggest causes of burnout because we're not looking after ourselves before helping others. Right? And we're going to teach you some very interesting ways uh, and this is my favorite one, which I've done quite a few times. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to do it all over again, because that's what a fresh start is. There you go. This one, Namrata. This one, Namrata, no. Perma, okay. Uh, by the way, if you like reading, uh, his book is called Flourish. You should read the book. It's a fabulous book, Flourish. Martin Seligman, Flourish. Okay, that's, okay. So that's the author name, Martin Seligman. And that's the book. Yeah, okay. So let, let's move on now. Okay. And so when you're in the throes of a deep burnout, 
Okay, and Katie Milkman's research is fabulous research here uh, because what she says is that if you can give yourself a fresh start, okay, that's your brain's way of rubbing out all the negativity of the past. Okay, so it could be, let's say we've had a stressful week like we all are experiencing. Okay, but today, let's say we are sitting down at uh, quarter to 12 and we're trying to figure out, okay, what can I do next week? Okay, what happens is because the brain senses that you're making a new start, it tends to forget about what's happening in the past. Okay, uh, because our brain always is in three phases. First, our brain is always thinking about the past. Okay, and when your brain is thinking about the past, what are the thoughts that usually come to your mind? When your brain is usually thinking about the past, but generally, generally when you're thinking about the past, what comes to your mind? About mistakes, about some of the choices, regrets, Lakshmi, absolutely. We're always in regret mode. Oh God, I wish I had done this. I wish I had not done that. Oh, we, oh I wish I had taken the job offer. Oh, I wish I had done this. I, okay. Uh, yeah, Venkat, no, no worries. We'll, we'll send you some slides. Uh, by the way, guys, keep taking screenshots. Okay. Uh, because I always tell people that even if we send you the slides, chances are it will remain in your email. You'll never access it. But if you take a slide, uh, picture on your mobile phone, it will remain there, okay? In your photo library, sometimes you're just scrolling, you might find that, okay? Yes, sir. So yeah, Uttara, bad things. So most of the time, you know, sort of, but good times, but usually the good times, we think about it, and then we start going into, oh, I wish I had those good times, you know, right? So therefore, it goes back, back into either nostalgia and the regret part of it, okay? So that's one. The past, in, Currently, we are usually thinking about the past and the regrets. Or a brain starts thinking about the future. And when a brain starts thinking about the future, what thoughts come to our head? When we are thinking about the future, so strategies, but what thoughts? What thoughts come to your head? What happens next? Okay, what happens next? What measures uncertainties, insecurities? Yeah, absolutely. Anxiety, and that gives us anxiety. Absolutely, Naveen. Absolutely. Now, how do we grow from here? The puja, yes, the fear sets in. What decisions? And Sandhya, therefore, those decisions start stressing us out, right? Well, should I should we take this decision or should we take this decision? Which is the correct decision to take, right, Sandhya? Okay. Uh, what can you do better? What can, yeah, so unknown path, how do we correct everything? Absolutely. So you see how sometimes our brain is in the past, sometimes it's in the future. And then even if it's in the present, okay, even if it's in the present, uh, Prachi, that's fabulous. If it's positive thoughts, then vision and plan. If negatives, anxiety and uncertainty. Absolutely, right? Okay. Uh, most of the time, Prachi, for you, are you in the positive or negative? What happens for you? Okay. Uh, well, while you answer the question, and even if you are in the current, okay, our, our brain is sometimes in a positive, thinking of positive in the current or negatives in the current. What are the thoughts that are coming to our heads when we are in the current? What thoughts are coming up? Even if you're thinking about present, yeah, but uh, Prachi, but where is your mind right now? <laughs> Or where more often is your mind? So even if you are in the current, okay, okay, uh, Abhiram, absolutely. So, so some people, if they are in the current, they can absolutely focus on the work and be at present with their work. But many of us, even when we are in the current, you know, we are looking around at our friends because suddenly our friends are going out, maybe for a party, maybe they are going out on a vacation, a mini vacation, okay. So sometimes, many times in the current, we are comparing. Okay, we are comparing ourselves with others. Okay, does that happen? We, we even in the current, we start comparing our lives with the lives of others. Yeah. And usually, what happens when we start comparing? Disappointments, right? 
because and you know the biggest culprit here i think is a gentleman by the name mark zuckerberg okay because thanks to him everybody else seems to have a better family better children better spouses better cars better vacations better jobs better bosses uh, everything seems to be better for everybody else except me right okay yeah and then uh, fomo right and then fomo yeah and therefore uh, we get yeah there's huge amount of fear of missing out okay we want to know exactly what's happened do we get a kick when we post something from 20 likes we go to 25 likes yeah and then important the fresh start effect is basically your brain saying hey wait a minute what can i do different okay and that's why we ask you to in this vision board what i want you to do is think about the next 21 days okay the next 21 days or you could even think one month you know exactly one month from now july 12th is my birthday okay so you can think of my birthday as a destination okay you can do it for 30 days let's say okay in the next 21 days or 30 days what is the one thing that you could do that will make you happier or what is the goal you want to set for yourself and what's the first step that you can take towards that goal for the next 30 days okay so take take a couple of minutes i'll give you a couple of minutes for this tell us what's the one thing you could do to make yourself happier thanks ajo <laughs> although one month is a big long hopefully you'll connect with us at 1 12 july also okay ran so take a minute off take a, take a minute and tell us what specifically can you do to make a fresh start now i'll tell you something very interesting that happened uh, i don't think that person is here today uh, so obviously i won't take that person's name Uh, so one of your colleagues uh, from uh, one of your fellows from upgrade uh, she she did this exercise uh, when we met last time and then she messaged me after a, uh, after a few days and uh, she was doing upgrade courses okay but then she had this fear uh, of being a, of going for interviews okay and because of this fear she would keep procrastinating and postponing her interviews or not uh and if she would go for an interview she would not do very well okay so i told her okay you know what next time you get an interview uh just message me and we'll do a fresh start effect with for you okay and guess what the so next time it happened uh she said you know uh, i just postponed one interview and i realized i've done this okay uh what do, what do you think i can do so i told her to do something interesting i told her this company that you are applying to where you were called for an interview which you postponed write down five things that make you remarkable that's the reason why this person should hire you okay so first write that down and after you write that down okay what's the thing that you can do to make sure that you go for that interview okay and she put it and guess what she actually went for that interview next friday and on monday she got the job <laughs> and she got the job on monday you know and and that i thought that was a classic and a great example of the fresh start effect actually taking that because it took her 10 days to get that interview lined up properly again okay and friday she messaged me uh and she went through three rounds on friday itself and boom monday she had a job <laughs> i was so thrilled with that okay i am taking i am taking zero credit for her capabilities and this was the person uh, she was actually coming back to work after maternity leave uh, so she was out of work she had not worked for 3 to 4 years and therefore very low on confidence okay uh, in case you're here uh, i you know who i uh, i don't think you're here but in case you're here uh, you know who i'm talking about <laughs> okay so therefore you know it helps her taking a fresh start and this is the example of uh, upgrade fellows like yourself for example yeah
So Vazim, uh, what exactly will you do? Okay, uh, learn more and implement based on today's on that knowledge. Okay, thirty day crash course on machine learning, Narayana. That's a very good thing. Uttara, take time for yourself. Meet real friends. Hang out with people who don't judge you. That's fabulous, Uttara. Okay, uh, take a vacation for a week. Okay, Amit. Uh, okay, meditation. Uh, Omar, overthinking. Taking one day at a time. Okay, uh, Sonia, travel. Always a nice thing. Okay, uh, getting a job. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Sakshi, you could maybe just put it as, you know, three steps. What are the three things that you can do which will get you closer to getting a job? So making a making a fabulous CV, for example. Okay, uh, and maybe at twelve thirty today, uh, ask help for some great CV examples, Sakshi. Come on, guys. Everyone else uh, will be great. Okay, completing the reading two books, writing two books. I, I presume reading. Uh, Prerna, start working out. What would you like to do? Uh, Run or gym, cardio. Okay, that's fabulous. So the trick there is just tell yourself, just twenty minutes. Okay, uh, Priya, cycling. Yeah, cycling, nice idea. Meditation, Gansham. Okay. You know, Aparna, I've been always wanting to do that, but I get so scared of falling. So maybe if you do that and send us pictures, send us pictures, Aparna, when you do that. Uh, start to get up at 5 a.m. Okay, Deepak, that's a good one. Okay, uh, puja, the yoga, L laughing exercise. That's a great exercise to have. Priya, uh, reading books. Just... Now, everybody, uh, once again, uh, how did you feel when you wrote about your goals? How did you feel? So Namrata absolutely fear holds you back and therefore, you know, just take a small, tiny step that you're comfortable with. <laughs> yeah, Prachi, absolutely. This gets, you, this gets you motivated, right? It's a great experience. Okay? It doesn't matter whether you're successful or not, so long as you keep trying it. So long as you keep trying it. How did it feel when you were reading other people's exercises? How did that feel? Yeah, it motivates you, right? Tino, did you uh, did you practice this last time also that we met, Tino? Or were you there? I think you were there last time, Tino, right? Yeah. So it's motivated, right? So you see, you know, when people start doing this together, you can you get motivated with each other. Yeah. So that's the, always the first step. Okay. That's the first one, and the second is a challenge that all of us have, and which is this animal called multitasking, because. We always feel we have so much to do and so little time. And we call this the hero mentality. Okay, The hero mentality is when you think that you, can, you have to do all this work yourself because A, only I can do this. Nobody else can do it. This, I, this job has to be done perfectly. So what, it has to be 10 out of 10 on all the aspects. And many of us, Okay. We can't say no when somebody gives us unreasonable amount of work or an unreasonable deadline. We just have a tough time saying no. Okay. How many of us have this problem? <laughs> Sonia, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's classic, that's classic hero mentality. That's classic, yeah? Big problem saying no, yeah. See, sometimes work does demand it, okay? But if it's happening every day, then you have to question yourself, Rajvi. Yeah? Uh, sometimes, if sometimes, absolutely, absolutely. If not me, then who, okay? Which is exactly that, okay? Only I can do this, okay? Miss and. Uh, Srishti, if you meet deadlines to meet perfection, that's also sometimes a sign of procrastination. Okay, Because sometimes 
we start a bit late and therefore you you may meet you miss those deadlines because you want to get the perfect product out okay. and uh question for all of you okay what i want you to do is okay very honestly first tell me during, when this talk has been on since 11 o'clock how many of you looked at your mobile phones Just say yes, they say no. Yeah. yeah, for Slido, that's fine. Okay, because I asked you to do that. That's for Slido. Okay. But how many of you just went into Instagram to scroll? How many of you looked at WhatsApp? Okay, so that's, all. that's a good sign that many of us are not doing that, which is fabulous. Okay, second question. I want you to tell me how many tabs are open on your computer right now? Hey, thanks, Navrata. That's nice of you. How many tabs on your computer are open right now? 25. That's quite a bit. On a typical working day, how many tabs are open? On a typical working day, how many tabs are open? And that's the myth of multitasking, okay? Uh, and uh, today we don't have too much time. Uh, I'll send you a link. There is a multitasking video by Ellen DeGeneres, okay? I'll send you this link uh, and I'll put it on chat just a bit later. Do watch this video by Ellen DeGeneres. It's hilarious, okay? Uh, I won't do that. But what we find is that we are interrupted 28% of the day, okay? Second, what we find is when we multitask, we are less happier. We experience more burnout. When we multitask, it takes us, by the way, you know, if you're doing an activity A, if we move to activity B and come back, it takes us 25 minutes to from peak focus on activity A to go to peak focus on activity B. It takes us 25 minutes because your brain is still on that earlier task. Okay, your brain doesn't shift uh, as fast. And if we come back to activity A or move, move on to activity C, okay, it takes another 25 minutes. Okay? And we are, what we find is multitasking takes us, uh, it makes us 40% less productive. Okay? And interruptions are the biggest causes of multitaskers. Okay? Uh, even when you're working from home, uh, emails will interrupt us, WhatsApp messages will interrupt us, calls will interrupt us, right? We are interrupted 28% of the time of the day, right? So therefore, that's one of the big myths of multitasking. A lot of us feel, uh, a lot of us have the science, and the science does go to show women are better multitaskers, but they're usually better multitaskers the way the genetic setup is done. You're better multitaskers for bringing up and children. If you have children and you're bringing up children, then your body and your brain kicks into uh, the mode where you can multitask because that's with the way the genetic setup is done, right? But over a period of time, this is the one part of the brain which actually diminishes and withers away, right? So therefore, it's meant only for that point of time when you have children and when you're bringing up children, okay? But a lot of women feel they're better multitaskers. Actually, they're not very better multitaskers. It's just that they are moving from task to task faster. And that's also one of the causes why they get stressed out much easier, much earlier and much faster. Not much easier, much earlier and faster. Right? And therefore, uh, what we also find is if you multitask with digital devices, your IQ actually reduces 35%. Uh, uh, the gray matter in your brain, which houses your IQ, reduces 35%. So if this is your brain at normal, okay, and this is your brain when you're doing recreational drugs like marijuana, weed, etc., okay, you can see, or the equivalent of losing one night's sleep when you pulled in a one all-nighter, 
that's the reduction that you get okay and that's exactly the impact you have when you're multitasking with electronic media okay and these are the sciences of, uh, you can see the sources of the studies etc right up there okay when you multitask with digital devices you can see the challenge okay and therefore but you're always in the switched on mode okay always always in this switched on mode and therefore okay what i want you to do is just think about your day reconstruction method yeah Salish, uh, okay, one thing you noticed is observed is, okay, I'll come to that, okay. Okay, multitasking increases irritability. A absolutely, it does, yeah. So one thing you might want to do is, and what we say here is, don't manage time, manage energy, okay. So therefore, what I want you to do is, look at your date tomorrow, look at your date tomorrow, and Look at a time, or, or you could just look at the last one week, or you could just look at Friday. Which of the time slots did you experience least amount of energy? Which are the time slots where you experienced the highest amount of energy? I don't annotate my screen. <laughs> so, everybody, if you can just share on chat, which times of the day do you experience? Peak energy, which, okay, way above, high for you in the morning. I guess many of us here also, because we uh, if you work night shifts, your maybe your body has got into shifted into the night mode also, right? But generally, if you are one of the guys who wake up in the morning and you have a daily day shift, okay, uh, and if you slept for seven hours, okay, your peak will always be in the mornings, okay. So whenever you wake up, okay, even if you wake up in the afternoon, if you have night shifts, etc., okay, when you wake up. Whenever you have the highest amount of energy, that's the time you should be doing the tasks which require the most amount of discipline. Okay, the most amount of so whenever you have your highest amount of energy, that's the time you should be doing your tasks which require the highest amount of discipline. When your body begins begins to tire a bit, that's when you should be doing more of the creative tasks. Okay because the inhibitions from your brain are going away because you're getting a bit tired. So the chances of coming up with a wacky solution are much higher. But if there's a strategic thinking class for a task, for example, or a tough conversation, a tough negotiation has to happen, always do that first thing in the, uh, whenever you have the highest, okay? Uh, yes, Elish, absolutely. And what happens is, and I'm going to cover that in just a bit. Okay, I'm going to cover that technique also in just a bit about what they call eating the frog. Okay, and therefore, the power of focus becomes very important. So what we say is, first is set up your task list for the day, the night before. Okay, and perform the toughest task first thing in the morning. Because what will happen is when you perform the first task first thing in the morning, okay, your brain registers a victory. And when your brain registers a victory, you feel very good about it. And then your subsequent day also begins to go better. Okay. The second trick is to avoid burnout is bookending meetings. What do I mean by that? You know, many of us, we attend meetings and most meetings, most Zoom meetings never begin on time, right? There are always two, three minutes gap, right? Okay. So try and log in on time for the Zoom meeting. Okay. And the two minutes time, which is available, just take that two minutes, you know, mute yourself, switch off the volume if you wish, okay, or keep it at, at close volume and just close your eyes for a minute or two and just collect your thoughts, okay? And just, or just doing a little breathing exercise and we'll explain the five second breathing exercise, or sorry, the five finger breathing exercise, right? So there were, these are some of the ideas about using your energies, okay? Uh, and uh, one important task is uh, what we don't tend to do is many of us have stopped dressing to work. Okay? You can see I'm wearing a jacket. Okay, uh, What you can't see is I'm wearing leather shoes, by the way. Okay, I'll be happy to send you pictures. Because what happens is the moment I wear a nice white shirt, 
Okay, wear my turban, my nice white shirt, I wear a jacket, shoes. What do you think happens in my head when I do that? What do you think happens in my head? Okay, uh, I even use a clicker, by the way. I even use a clicker. <laughs> okay, as you can see, okay, I can I change my slides using a clicker. Okay, I'm just changing my slides to show my clicker works. Okay, what do we feel? What happens when I'm holding a clicker? What mode do I go into? I go into presenter mode, right? I go into presenter mode. Suddenly, I'm a presenter. Okay, uh, I'm wearing a suit. I'm kind of creating that environment for myself. Okay, uh, if you have kids at home, okay, uh, again put them in school uniform, and you know you can tell them this is mummy's office, this is daddy's office, this is your office. Okay, uh, and then schedule breaks, etc. Okay, so this kind of tends to also help you separate work life and home life because it kind of gives you that little transition time. Okay. Uh, and then at the start of every meeting, close the tabs that were earlier open because then your brain also comes into an earlier mode. Okay. If you close the tab, also just make a to-do list so that your brain knows you have created a to-do list for that. Okay. Uh, how, if you are one of the types who have to check everything about coronavirus, uh, just schedule five minutes a day. And you can say, you know what, five... At five o'clock, I'm going to check all the coronavirus news, lockdown news, opening, everything at five o'clock. Okay, so save everything. Uh, and uh, now Chrome has a very nice thing called reading list. Okay, So if your brain says, hey, this is important to read, add it to the reading list and then read it at five o'clock. Okay? So that's one aspect uh, that you could use. So basically where we are getting to is that you need to make sure that you wear your oxygen mask before you help others, right? And, uh, oh, sorry, I don't want to cover this for now. Okay, uh, I'm going to go into my next aspect. Now, this is the key now when it comes to managing the burnout, because what happens is you have to manage the burnout at three different levels. The first level is micro. And how do you manage burnout through the day? Okay, we already explained what you can do about using your energy wisely, okay? But the mistake we tend to make, and how many of us do that, when we start working at nine o'clock, we go and we work right nonstop, let's say from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. How many of us do that? Maybe you're working nine, nine, uh, nonstop. Yes, Umar, we'll come to that. Uh, we'll, we'll come to the Pomodoro technique. How many of us work nonstop? Uh, in, uh, Manish, you're absolutely right. Sometimes, you know, the work demands are there. So therefore, what we recommend is you have to give yourself micro breaks. Okay. So therefore, just scheduling. Yeah, Namrata, absolutely. So for example, just scheduling a prep time before and after meeting. Okay. So just give yourself five minutes before a meeting to say, okay, I'm going to prepare for this meeting. And after the meeting, give yourself another five minutes to just take a breath and calm down. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I want you to do is everybody open up your calendar for tomorrow and just slot for my benefit. Okay, Just say this is for Birenda. I'm doing it for Birenda's sake, not for your sake. Slot in 10 minutes of me time for tomorrow, everybody. Okay, Say this 10 minutes is me time. Nobody, if I'm doing something important, I know I have to plan so that at this 10 minutes is going to be secure. Okay, So everybody, if you were to plan me time for tomorrow, what time will it be for you? 10 minutes and not more than 10 minutes. And say this is Birenda's me time, okay? And give me an exact time slot. It could be 5.20. It could be 8.20 a.m. It could be 3.30. But somewhere in the work day. Somewhere in the work day. Okay? So 4.30 for you, Shubangi. Okay. So Deepak, 5.30, usually it'll be me time itself, okay? Unless, so unless you're doing office work at 5.30. Uh, so somewhere in the middle of the day, somewhere in the middle of the day, a 10-minute me time. Okay, that's cool, yeah? <laughs> okay, 12.15, okay, 12 to 12.10, 2.30, okay. So just give yourself, slot yourself 10 minutes me time, okay? And then even if you are in meetings through the day, 
all you have to do is for example go off video like you are okay okay go off video and just stand up like i am doing right now okay so even now for example we've been sitting for 1 hour 15 minutes just everybody just stand up okay just stand up everyone okay i'm going to come on video okay okay all i want you to do is just stand up okay and then just bounce on your feet everybody just stand up and go on your heel uh, oh, sorry uh, yeah you should not get a heel but you should be on the ball of your feet and just bounce up and down okay now just stretch your toe for just three seconds to five seconds. Okay, everybody, just do that. For three seconds to five seconds, just bounce up and down on the ball of your feet, everybody. And tell me how did that feel? Just three, five, six, five seconds, just bounce up and down on your feet. <laughs> and tell me how did that feel? I hope you actually did it, yes, Eilish? <laughs> Yeah, suddenly you get energy, right? Suddenly you get energy. Okay. Uh, and, you know, maybe you have calls where you are a passive listener. Okay. Uh, what you can do is take the call on your mobile phone and just keep walking up and down. Okay. Because that will also help you there. Okay. Uh, and so taking calls. Uh, how many of you do power naps, by the way? How many of you do power naps? So power naps also help. Power naps. Uh, so what happens in power nap is it completely boosts your uh, your entire brain span for the entire day, right? So just a fifteen to twenty five minutes, not more than twenty five minutes, you could do a power nap, and that will charge you up. Okay. So this is about the micro breaks. Okay. Some other techniques is also what we call the five second, uh, the five finger breathing. Now for the five finger breathing, I need all of you to come on camera, everybody. For the five finger breathing, I want you to come up on camera, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to do the five finger breathing, everybody. Come on camera, okay? The five finger breathing is get your hand up to your face like this and with your index finger, everybody, show me your hand with your chin and start with one end like you can see here, okay? And then trace your hand finger up as you go. As your finger goes up, breathe in. And as your finger goes down, as you're tracing it, breathe out. Okay? Breathe in. And then breathe out. Breathe in. And then as it goes down, breathe out. Breathe in. And then breathe out. Breathe in and then breathe out okay and then reverse okay you can go the reverse way also okay uh, or if you have somebody at home a partner a parent a child okay you can do it for each other okay so you can your finger traces the other person's hand okay uh, and this just helps you also your brain senses a touch okay so how did it feel just now when we did a very quick five finger breathing how did that feed? Did it get your attention back? Did your, your brain get charged up? Yeah. Uh, and then while I have you on camera, okay. Uh, okay. So that's what we call the five finger breathing. Okay. Uh, because one mistake we make about breathing and meditation is we think, you know, it needs to be 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It need not be just a 20 second breathing exercise where you trace your hands out. That also becomes as a great break. Okay, you, you get more focused and your focus comes back. Absolutely, Manish, right? It, it returns you to back to your flow. So that's also called the five-finger breathing. Okay. And uh, another technique is what we call the exercise snack. Okay, the exercise snack. Okay, uh, I'm a compulsive snacker. Okay, uh, yesterday was my wafer day. Today, I don't know what it'll be. I'm a compulsive snacker. Okay. Uh, an exercise snack is... Uh, Okay, Prachi, I'll take care. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the exercise snack is like you planned a me time for Monday. For Tuesday, I want you to plan an exercise snack. Okay. And just tell us during this time, what is the 10 minutes exercise that you will do for yourself? Okay. It could just be walking up three floors and walking down three floors. Okay. So snacking on an exercise. Okay. So for Tuesday now, tell us what time and what exercise snack will you do? Okay. 
It could be just maybe you'll sit down on the floor and breathe. You'll breathe for five minutes. That's it. Okay. Or you just walk uh, from your building. You'll not take the elevator. You'll just walk five floors down, five floors up. You know, it could be something as simple as that. Okay. Okay. Four o'clock burpees. Okay. For example, four o'clock burpees. Okay. Spot jog. Okay. Shadow boxing, Harshwardhan. Okay. Fabulous. Uh, what time? What time, Pratik and Harsh? What time? Sonia, that's a great one, actually. Okay. Just put on music and you know, go for it. <laughs> Uh, Gansham, you know, that's a fab, again, that's a nice one, street walk. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, Upasana, uh, in, somewhere in the middle of the day, somewhere in the middle of the day, a five-minute snack, <laughs> cleaning utensils, perhaps. <laughs> okay, centering exercise, Anusya, uh, what time? Anu, what time? Okay, uh, Deepak, 3 p.m. ticket to offer. Okay, Pratik, uh, spot, uh, spot jog before lunch, okay. Uh, Abhiram, okay, 1.30, three floors up, three floors down. Okay, uh, a stretching exercise at three o'clock. Okay, so we got a Monday calendar and we got a Tuesday calendar, okay. Okay, the walk staircase upstairs and downstairs, two stories, two stories. Yeah, Tushar? Okay, uh, that, and that itself could be a great cardio workout. Okay, so that's the micro breaks part of it. And now we come to uh, macro, okay. Very important here is seven hours of sleep. I cannot overemphasize the importance of seven hours of sleep. Okay, and uh, especially on Fridays, if possible, or even if you can do this every day, even better. You know, actually close the lid of your mobile of your laptop. Okay, so close the lid from your mobile of your laptop. Put it. Put the laptop in your laptop bag and log off from work. <laughs> Okay, just like you would do in a normal office day. Okay, so once you said, okay, I'm out, I'm off for the day, put it down, put it in the laptop bag. If you have kids in your house or a partner or a spouse on the weekend, tell them, hide the bag for me. <laughs> right, or if you have a parent or somebody, tell them, you know, for the next three hours, uh, hide your, hide the bag. And, and if I want the bag, uh, you know, you can pay a penalty of 100 rupees and claim the bag back or something like that. Just create a little layer of difficulty on getting to your device. Okay. But very important is just connecting, uh, just making sure you log off. Okay. And then uh, one thing that I found very interesting for me is every day, just select two people or three people who you lost touch with and just ask, just connect with them, ask them how are they feeling. Okay. And then actually listen to them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Vivek, absolutely. Right. Uh, having a separate place of work is also important. Uh, if you can do that, absolutely do that. Okay, uh, try, and, try and keep those transitions available for you. Okay? Uh, so taking a short walk, getting your focus back, etc. on your breath, uh, that's also some great ideas. So this is what we call micro, and then we've done mezzo, which is end of the day. Okay? And then another very interesting exercise, which I'm going to ask you to do very quickly, is what we call autophotography. Okay? Autophotography, because a lot of us tend to take, uh, we love pictures, right? What I want you to do is, right now, just go around your house, okay, and click, let's say, six pictures, okay? Ideally, I would ask you to take 12 pictures. If you can take 12 pictures, that's even better. I want you to take six to 12 pictures of anything that matters to you in your house, okay? I'm going to give you, what's the time, what's the time, what's the time? It's 12.23. I'm going to give you three minutes for this activity. So everybody, quickly go off camera, click three pictures, three, six, 12 pictures, as many as you can. And in three minutes, come back. So three minutes, guys, three minutes.
Nikhil Sakshi, tell us what pictures you're taking. <laughs> So as many, Vaibhav, as many, the bedroom, the bed, okay, the bed's an important place, the puja room, plants, TV. Tell us some more, tell us some more, what pictures, plants, balconies, okay, balcony. The roof. And now tell us in one or two sentences, why is that important for you? Why is it important? Why is it meaningful for you? Gansham, that's nice. Thanks. Okay. Why is this important for you? Uh, so why is the balcony important? Why is the study table important? Why is the puja place important for you? Your mom, of course. Okay. Sky. Because, uh, okay. Some people are saying sky because it, it signifies freedom for you. Number three of family, food, kids, okay. Your support, because they say your support system, fabulous, yeah, fabulous. They remind you that you have a support system there. It adds positivity, it makes you relaxed, happy. Yeah, a selfie. Okay. Puja is important because it's where you get, okay. Meditation, you get relief from stress, Deepak. Nice. Okay. Balcony is important because it's a place where you feel relaxed. Okay. The dressing table, the mirror, feel good about yourself and you look happy. Nice, Uttara. Yeah, it reminds you of your existence. So, what we recommend is uh, take 12 pictures. So, today, through the course of the day, or you know, you could do this once a month, once a week. Okay. Just take 12 pictures. And, uh, you know, if possible, take hard copies of the pictures and just keep a little thin album with yourself. You know, you get these thin albums and just keep building on that little album. Okay. If you don't like the albums, etc., you could keep it on your mobile phone. But, you know, that, that hard, tangible feel of photographs is something very different, right? Okay. So just take a photograph and take it to a photo studio and they'll, be, they'll do it for you very nicely, very cheap, uh, not very expensive. But yeah. Like I said, if you want to just do it on soft copy, you could do it on soft copy. And next time, okay, when you find yourself going into a little spiral of negativity, just opening up this portfolio or this album will give you that little boost of energy that you need. Okay, so we always recommend this once a month. Okay, uh, Uttara, your daughter, she keeps you motivated. Yeah, so having a couple of pictures about your daughter, uh, maybe your daughter doing something at school, maybe receiving something, yeah, some recognition there. And this is called autophotography. This, this intervention that I trained you on, Michael, this is Michael Steger's intervention here. Okay. And now the final section, okay, uh, which is about the macro breaks. If you've not taken a break for six months, etc., just scheduling time off uh, will be interesting for you. Yeah. Uh, Shalini, absolutely. Screen savers, laptop, TV screen, absolutely. Okay. So for example, uh, I have Ganesh. Uh, uh, we, we do, I do Ganesh Chaturthi every year. We get Ganesha. And every year I change the Ganesha there. So that's my Ganesha day. Uh, and every year on Ganesh Chaturthi day, uh, I take a picture and it stays with me for the entire year. And I change that. Okay. So absolutely, Uttara. Okay. So, and therefore, taking the macro breaks also helps. Okay. And now comes the final activity with which I'll hand over to Sakshi. Okay. So I'll explain the activity and then Sakshi will take this over. Okay. So one is, yes, we've done the fresh start effect. Okay, where we looked at the new era, new me. Now, think of a goal that you want to set for yourself. Okay, and just one thing, just one thing. Okay, uh, uh, Nikhil, I'm still doing my task. I'm doing my task. Uh, I haven't got it yet. Nikhil, Nikhil, Nikhil. Nikhil, if I can, I've got the last thing still to go. 
Okay. Uh, go ahead with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've got the poll. Uh, the poll is running there. Okay. We'll get to the poll very quickly. Okay. Now, what we want you to do is, okay, and which is the final tip? Okay. I'm going to come to this. Uh, I'm just going to come to this in a bit. Okay. And this is about what we call relationships and reciprocity. Okay. What we want you to do is, when Sakshi takes this over, I would just want to explain what is reciprocity. So, you know, we are all a bunch of fellows here and a bit of fellow grad students. We are a bunch of friends. And Wayne Baker studies reciprocity. What he says is that, you know, let's say if I do some, if uh, let me look at my chat, okay? Uh, so I have some chat names there, okay? Now, for example, if Shalini does something good for me, I might do something good back for her, okay? But what more or less hap more, more likely to happen is if Shalini does something good for me, I, am, I will be more motivated to do something good for, let's say, Uttara. Uttara might want to do something good for Vaibhav. Vaibhav will do something good for Priya. Priya then does do something good for Gansham, okay? And that's what sets into motion what we call generalized reciprocity or paid forward, okay? And therefore, this is the culture that we set out. But the most important thing is asking for help. Okay. But if it is so important, why don't we ask for help? Any guesses why we don't ask for help? What's the biggest barrier in asking for help? Ego, yeah, absolutely, Puja. It is the fear of judgment, okay? Sachin, yeah, secondary, you don't know who to ask for help, okay? Uh, but absolutely, it is the fear of being judged. And that's why when we ask the question, most of us, when we are stressed, we figure it out ourselves, okay? Namrata, yeah, we don't even know who to ask for, okay? And uh, the, that's the biggest barrier we have in asking for help, okay? So therefore, uh, so that's the one. And then say it's also, you know, okay, you know, let's say, yes, I know Pratik is there, Pratik is an expert, but you know, I don't want to intrude on Pratik's space. So I don't ask Pratik. Okay. Or maybe Vaibhav asked me a couple of times, I didn't help him, and then he stops asking me, okay, because the history is there. Okay. So there are various reasons. So now what we want you to do is, and where Sakshi will take this over, okay, you can ask for help, and we call this making thoughtful and intelligent requests. Okay. We want you to frame your request. It could be, you know, you're looking for information for this. You're looking for this expertise. Okay. Or you're, it could be that, you know, uh, I, I'm just stressed out. I just want to talk to somebody. Okay. I just want to vent. You know, do you know, uh, can somebody talk to me, et cetera, right? Just being very specific. And we call this two asks. Okay. One is we call it, how can you help others? Okay. So you can say, these are my five strengths and this is how we can help others. And then seeking help, okay? So that's when Sakshi is going to take this over, okay? Uh, and I'm going to leave this as instructions on your chat. Okay, everybody? Uh, Sakshi, uh, over to you. You can do the polls now and you can, okay? Meanwhile, I'm going to just pause. If you have any questions, happy to take any questions now. Um, thank you so much, Birendra. I've also launched the poll on the site. Uh, people can whoever have already polled can either poll again I think it'll just start afresh and in about five minutes I will break everybody into smaller breakout rooms where they'll be able to talk to each other in a group of five so I'll just give them two three minutes for the questions while the poll is going on super thank you so much for that yeah okay and while everybody done the polls okay uh yeah, yeah I think everybody doing the polls okay super Okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, everybody, if you want questions, etc., uh, the instructions for the request. Okay, I'm going to put that down right now. Just give me a second while I go off. So, Sakshi, hopefully that sets it up for you, and you can take that over. Definitely, definitely, Billy. Thank you so much for that. I'm just going to wait for about another uh, five, six people to finish the voting and the people who are left. And then we'll just go into breakout rooms. You guys can talk to each other, ask anything if you have, give back to 
uh, people who you know need help and probably talk about um, anything else that you want to also introduce yourselves tell them what you guys are doing right now that's that's super helpful we'll just wait for another 30 seconds before we break into groups okay so the first thing is on chat okay how you can help others and the second one seek help oh sorry it's gone only to one person by mistake sorry for that let me send it to everyone there you go perfect so we're going to just go into breakout rooms now okay i'll sign off meanwhile yeah perfect perfect yeah. okay perfect. thank you thank you guys and look forward to seeing you tomorrow and sometime very soon take care bye bye Most welcome, Tino. Most welcome. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Is there anybody there? Hello, is anybody there in this breakout room? Hello. Hello.
Hey folks, I see a lot of you guys haven't joined any uh, breakout rooms. Um, would you like to join a breakout room? How are things going? Uh, sure, Srikanth here. Uh, I couldn't. Ask. Yeah, thank you.
Okay, hi everybody. I hope you guys were able to meet more people uh, during your breakout rooms. I hope you guys were able to interact with each other and your peers. Uh, what, I've, what we've done is we have put in uh, a couple of links in the chat for Sharp 2.0. Uh, the first link is for a profile analysis and a mock interview. In case any of you are interested in that, it's going to be a 40-minute session with industry experts. There's also a career coaching session with celebrity coaches like uh, Sandeep Kochar. I don't know how many of you guys know about it. Put a link in a registration form for that as well. And the third link we've put in for is After Us, which is a, a one single day networking session, which is going to happen on the 20th. Uh, I'm just going to repost the links for those of you who can't see it. I can see um, see that it's... Uh, can everybody see the links now? I hope so. Perfect. Um, this, on 20th, uh, which is the Sunday, we have a single day networking event. It's going to be on a platform called AirMeet. And the idea is to meet people in your domain um, cross domain and a, a lot of other people in the community who you can talk to. Um, there's going to be a table format and you're going to be able to meet these people. So you can register for all the events on the link. Um, thank you so much for staying back. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's great. You can just fill the poll in, fill the registration forms in, and I'll see you guys again on the 20th. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.